Hello there and welcome back. This is JPP Japan's Perfect Pens. My name is Richard and today we will be doing another pen review. So today's pen will be a Yukari Royale and this is the Parrot with Peach. This pen was by Masaru and this is a 2020 pen, so an edition that's currently in production. So here it is. Now the Yukari Royale are the second largest Namiki pen size, the largest being the Emperor and the smaller being the Yukari size. We'll get into that a little bit later. This is a cartridge converter pen. It's a brass pen with Urushi on top and Makia over the Urushi. 15 centimeters long, the section diameter quite broad up to about 13 millimeters at most. There's a little bit of Makia on the clip and it sports a two-tone size 20, 18 karat gold Namiki nib. So the elements on this pen are the parrot and multiple peaches. The technique used is Togidashi Taka Makie, which is burnished raised Makie. Now this means combining charcoal and Urushi to create the raised effect and using the effect to highlight elements of the pen. It takes many, many layers to create these effects. So as I rotate here, you can immediately see on the parrot, various feathers are raised up from the surface. You can see the texture of it there. You can see the peaches. I've also got the Tograshitake Makie. And as I rotate around now, there are these beautiful branches and lovely coloration on the peaches. It's quite difficult to create that effect. And you see a little bit of blossom as well. Now, as with many Namiki pens, we have the two elements, one creature and one plant. And the common theme in this case is marriage and fidelity. So both the parrot and the peach are associated with that theme. So this is a marriage themed pen. Now, if I just turn it around and show you the back, you can see straight away that the leaves are done in several different ways with various greens and golds. And here at the bottom is the Kokakai signature and the artist's signature. So quite a bit of variance. They don't want to make the leaves all identical and so it'd be a little bit boring. And they don't want to make too much of the gold theme. So the greens and the golds are quite balanced, both in the leaves, but you can also see here on the parrot. So if I unscrew here, let's show you the nib. Okay, here we are. This is the size 22 tone the Mickey nib so 18 karat gold they write smoothly they have a wet flow this comes with a con 70 converter which holds about one milliliter which is pretty good and the two-tone mount fuji snow cap which is done with rhodium plating to make the second tone as you can see there in that collection of several yukari real nibs so it's a very pleasant pen to write with. It's actually one of the most popular Namiki sizes. It's nowhere near as large as the Empress, which means it fits many more people's hands. Here is the size demonstration. So here it is in the middle. On the left, there is a chinkin in Yukari size. And if you notice, the chinkin is more or less the same size. It's not quite as broad, but the caps are nearly the same size. The length of the pen is pretty similar. The section length is reasonably similar. The nibs aren't too dissimilar. But then you compare the Yukari Royale to the Emperor Goldfish on the right, and there's a huge difference, not least in the nib size, but also the very widest part of the section on the Yukari Royale is only just starting to come close to the width of the section on the Emperor at its narrowest. So if I just put them side by side here, you can really see the difference between those two nibs. So the size step up from the regular Yukari nib to the Yukari Royale nib is significant, but nowhere near as significant as the step up from the Yukari Royale to the Emperor. So that's why the Emperor nib has quite a lot more bounciness in how it writes. And then as you go smaller into the Namiki nibs, they feel a little bit harder while still being very smooth writers. Now this is a really comfortable size. I mean, a lot of people, this is just a perfect pen size to write with. Um, I love the Emperor, but that's because I do have large hands. But the Miki Royale is an absolute favorite. So let's talk about the pen. It's an elegant pen. The P 
peaches, the brunch, the leaves, those delicate flowers. It's a nicely done, elegantly designed pen. There's a little bit of gold powder at the top of the pen, at the bottom of the pen, and a few bands of it in the middle just to break up the background so it's not a solid black behind it. But I do like the way this gold and green theme runs throughout. It's really well designed, it works very nicely, and it just allows the light pink on the peach to stand out so the peaches don't look too stand out. They look like white peaches, with just that little bit of pink to them. But I think that's done very nicely. And those blossoms are also just very nice, very elegant. They're a nice little touch. And as usual on the Namiki Macchie pens, the branches are done very well. In this case, the branches have got that gold powder in the middle of them. It gives them that little bit of texture. They're not too overwhelming. They're not too dark. It's just, just right. And so you get this balance between the peaches with their very gentle pinks and then the parrot itself. And the parrot is the only place on the pen where you see this strong blue color. And it blends nicely into the green and the gold and the yellow shading around it. But also does draw your attention to the parrot. So it's strong, but it's not like it's been done in bright red or orange. It's just nice. And again, it's balanced. I talk about that with every pen. It's well balanced. Now the two-tone nib is sitting next to a blank section. I'm okay with them not putting any macchie on the section. And it just leaves the parrot and the peaches as the main theme. I like that there's quite a few peaches so it's visible at any point on the pen. The parrot may be at the front but you can always see a peach no matter which way you turn it. And the framing here at the top and the bottom of the barrel with the gold powder, it just brings it to a nice sense of completion. And of course, this is a thematic pen, so that most people purchasing this pen will be buying it because of the themes of marriage and fidelity. And I think that's just extremely common in the design principles of Namiki and other Japanese pens in general. It's made according to a theme, and it's beautiful artwork as well. So you can buy it because of the theme or because of the artwork, and ideally both. So look, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to making more videos like this, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, and bye-bye.